Welcome back guys, welcome to module two, data structures and data types. Today we're gonna to be getting into lists and tuples, two ways that you can hold data inside of Python. There are many other ways you can hold data, but these are the two types we're gonna go through today. So let's jump into the PowerPoint presentation and let's talk about lists and tuples. So today, as always, I'm Matthew Wynn, and this is our Python Bootcamp for Intro to Programming. Today, we're gonna to be going over lists and what lists are. We're gonna be going over tuples. It'll be about 15 to 20 minutes long. I have a little Python meme for you guys here where there's a guy who asks, does your Python bite? In this case, he says no, but it can hurt you in other ways, an indentation error, and that's how he will hurt you. <laughs> it's a joke for Python, haha programming memes, trying to make it funny and relatable. All righty guys, so hands on today, we're gonna to be using Windows as always. I'll be working our Jupyter Notebook. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Matthew, N-G-U-Y-E, 2023 at fau.edu. So what are lists? Lists are ordered and mutable, which means that you can change and manipulate them and they're a collection of items in Python or a collection of elements. They are notated by square brackets. So you'll see a square brackets and that will notate a list. A list can contain elements of different data types such as numbers, strings, and even other lists. You can make a list inside of a list. Uh, and lists support indexing and slicing which allows you to manipulate the list, add elements, take them out, get things like the length of elements. Uh, the length of lists and whatnot. I've included a quick picture here to show you. So lists actually start with an index of zero. So your first element in your list will have an index of zero and will go numerically as you see here. So test at zero will be 41 and test at five will be 100 or this test can be whatever your list name is. So let's take a look at a sample list here. I have two lists, numbers and fruits. If I wanna access the element in the list, you're going to call the list. In this case, let's use numbers. So if we want to access the first element, we will write numbers at zero. Remember to access an element in the list, we start at zero and go forth to the end number of elements and just being however long the list is. And there are ways to find out how long your list is. Let's go back into lists and we can slice lists by getting a subset of elements. So let's say we only wanna get the numbers from one to four, um, or the indexes of one to four. This will return two, three, four, and five, because we know that lists start with an index of zero. So if we did zero to four, we would get one, two, three, and four. All right, so let's say we wanna modify the list, and we can do so by accessing the list by listing its name. So in this case, if we wanna change fruits at one, which will be zero, one, which we're gonna change banana in this case, we're gonna change banana to kiwi, and we can also append elements by adding it to the end of the list by calling fruits.append, which is a method on the fruits uh, list here. And we can add in the parentheses what we wanna add. So we'll get into the Jupyter Notebook and we'll do some of these uh, practices together, but that's a way you can also modify the list as well. Alrighty, so what are tuples? Tuples are ordered and they're immutable. So once they're declared, they cannot be changed and they're a collection of items slash elements in Python. They're very similar to lists in a way that they're structured. However, you are unable to actually do anything to a tuple. They remain the same constant length uh, once you declare them, so you can't make any changes to them. They're enclosed with parentheses or created without parentheses, so you can actually create a tuple without even putting parentheses, but I highly suggest you do to show the user that you're making a tuple. Tuples are useful for representing data that's fixed in its length. So let's say you have three specific things you only want to reference within a tuple and they will never change. You can represent them in a tuple rather than a list so that nobody can change these elements. And let's take a look at a tuple. So coordinates is a tuple here. Also colors is a tuple. Remember, uh, Python will interpret this as a tuple because it does not have the parentheses. If we wanna access the element, the same thing, the index starts at zero like a list. So coordinates at zero returns 10 because we know it's zero, one. There are two elements, but it's zero for the index and one um, for the second index. So zero for the first, one for the second. Now let's take a look again. Unpacking, so assign tuple elements to multiple variables. You can do this in Python by doing something like this, x comma y equals coordinates. And that will assign the elements to multiple variables inside of a tuple. Or again, it's immutable. Immutability in the tuples make that you cannot change their elements once you create a tuple. 
So let's highlight the differences again, lists versus tuples. Lists are mutable, which means you can change, you can append, you can add certain elements in the list. Tuples are immutable. Lists can be used for collections that might change in size or may change in content. Let's say you have a list of names and you need to update the names. You can always access whatever index your element is inside of your list and change that. Tuples are immutable, which means they cannot be changed after the creation. I'm going to say that again because that's the most important part of a tuple. Tuples are fixed collections of data. So that means that once you declare them, you cannot change them. So an example here can be coordinates, RGB colors, etc. Let's hop into our Jupyter notebook to get us a little bit more familiar with the code aspect of lists and tuples. Okay guys, so here we have our Python Jupyter notebook here. So what we're gonna be looking at is our numbers and our fruits uh, lists here. Let's comment out our fruits list and let's just take a look at our numbers first. Let's say we wanna print numbers at the zero index, we'll get one, right? We'll get one. Now let's say we wanna get the elements, all of the elements in the list. We can get, we can do this. We can do zero to lang numbers to get the length of the numbers and that will get us the entire list here so basically we're starting at zero and we're getting the length of the numbers list so that's one of the ways you can do that inside of python now let's look at some other uh methods that we can do to our list so let's do numbers dot append let's add the number six to it and let's print numbers now so in this case if we run this now we're going to add that six to it the next method that I wanna show you guys for a list is extend. So we can extend the list by the number of elements that we declare in another variable. So in this case, let's say more fruits equals brackets to signify a list. Let's add mango, let's add pear. So what we can do is we can call the list again, fruits.extend and we'll extend it by more fruits. Now let's print fruits. And now what will happen here is we'll actually add those two other fruits to the end of the list so that using that extend method, we're able to actually make the array or the list longer. You guys might hear me say array because I started writing JavaScript for my first coding language. So I always mention it as an array, um, but an array list, same same difference. Alrighty, let's do another method here. So let's do fruits dot insert. And inside of this method, we're going to feed it an index. So let's do it at the zero index, which will be the uh, apple in this case, and we'll do a comma. So we want to insert at the zero index, we want to insert the fruit pair. Now let's print fruits again. Now guess where this is going to go. All right, so if you guessed before Apple, you guessed correctly, let's run this. Now by using that insert uh, method, we're able to add the pair in front of the Apple. So let's do an insert here. Let's do len of the fruits. In this case, guess where it's going to add that pair that we wanna to add to our fruits list. Let's run it, print fruits. Cool, it's gonna add the pair to the end. Now, if we wanna make it right before the end, we do len minus one, let's run it. And we're gonna add that pair right before the end. So we're saying the len minus one, and we're gonna add that pair in there. Let's go to the remove method. So let's take this out. Let's do uh, fruits dot remove. Let's remove banana in this case and you guessed it, you're gonna be able to remove that from the list. So let's print fruits, click run, and now we do not have the banana in our fruits list. Alrighty, let's take a look at the pop method. So let's do fruits.pop, and by default, if you just do this and then you print fruits, then it's going to take off the last element in the list, so let's run it. We don't have grape anymore. Now, what you can actually do is you can actually specify a specific index of the pop. So let's do two popped fruit equals fruits popped at two. Fruits, click run. 
it's going to pop that fruit out of the list. Now, if we want to print popped fruit, it will return the fruit that we decided to pop out of the list. So that would be orange in this case. All right, let's take a look at the index method. So let's do fruits.index. Let's say banana in this case. Let's put this into a variable. Index equals fruits.banana. Now let's print the index. In this case, it's going to return one, saying that fruits in the fruits list, the banana shows up in the first index, which is the second element in the list. All right, let's look at the count method. So let's do fruits.count. Let's count apple. Now let's see what you think it's going to return. So we run, it's going to output one. Now let's say we add apple again and run this again. It's going to return two because we had apple twice in our list. So pretty useful uh, for doing some things like maybe removing duplicates or, or like maybe counting the number of duplicates we have in a list. Now let's do the sort. Uh, let's go, let's bring back our numbers in this case. Um, so let's comment our fruits out, even though we don't have to, but let's do it. So let's do numbers dot, dot sort. Let's print numbers now. And because the numbers are already sorted, it's gonna be it's gonna work out fine. But let's add maybe 10 in front of here. So let's click run. Now we see how the uh, numbers list was organized from smallest to largest. All right, let's look at the reverse method. So let's do numbers dot reverse. In this case, it's going to reverse our list. So let's print numbers now. Let's run this. Now we have our list backwards. We have it starting at the last element first and going all the way down to the first element. All right, let's take a look at the clear method. So let's do numbers.clear. And as you guys might guess, it's going to clear the numbers array. So let's print numbers in this case. Let's run this again. And as you guys can see, the list is now cleared. So we have nothing in the list. So let's say we want to add to the numbers. So numbers equals the array or the list. One, two, three, four, five. And now we can print numbers. As you guys know, as the code goes down, it takes over the variable that's the lowest here. So let's run this. Now numbers will be one, two, three, four, five. So we clear the numbers in this case. We printed the numbers at this instance in this in the code. Now we have the numbers here again. We're declaring the numbers array. And we're printing the numbers again. Okay, guys, so let's take a look at tuples now. We have our tuples down here. We have the coordinates and we have our colors. As you guys know, in tuples, you can either declare them by putting them in parentheses or you can put them into a list like this. You can put this separated by commas and Python will know it to be a tuple. So let's just try that. Let's do print um, type colors should give us tuple. Let's run. It will define this as a tuple. So let's also do the coordinates. That will also be a tuple. All right. So tuples, guys, as you guys know, you can't manipulate tuples uh, after they've been declared, but you can assign some variables to tuples. So let's say we want to have a, b, c, d equals to coordinates. Let's print a, b. Let's print c, d. Let's click run. And as you guys can see, our variable ad is now equal to the first element in the tuple, and the second variable is equal to the second value in the tuple. So let's say we want to assign our colors as variables. So red, green, blue equals colors. Let's print red, green, print blue. Let's run this and we're going to get red, green, and blue. So each variable that we have in this comma separated text here will be assigned to the respective, the respective element 
in the tuple. Pretty useful. Uh, tuples are very useful when you don't want your data to be changed. So coordinates is a good example. Let's say you have a specific set of coordinates. Um, let's let's do a little input here. So let's let's do let's clear this out. Let's do input 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 your coordinates for latitude input let's copy this for longitude not the best at spelling teaching python not english so let's do that let's save this as latitude let's save this as longitude now let's do coordinates equals latitude longitude longitude now let's print coordinates let's run this so our coordinate for latitude is this longitude is this and now we have our tuple of our latitude and longitude now if we want to make these numbers again just throw an int method or function in function top of this so wrap this in the int let's restart the kernel so now that we've thrown the int function built-in function in, in front in, in front of this input let's do that again so 100 or 1000 doesn't matter 304 so we know that our longitude and latitude our latitude and longitude is a thousand and 304 um, that's where you can find useful as being helpful is when you have data that you need to be set so let's say we have some data analysis do, done on a longitude and latitude to determine where we are in the world um, you'll probably want to set that to a tuple so people can append that specific variable inside of python we want those to be set um, you can use this for like RGB or time codes or temperatures that might be useful in your case. Um, so this is going to be the list in tuples lecture for today, guys. In the next lecture, we're going to be getting into dictionaries and sets. And then following that, we'll get into another module where we're actually going to get into some conditionals and loops and then functions. So there's a lot more to come. We're building the basics in Python now so you guys can understand how all the pieces come together. And then from here, we're going to get into some beautiful stuff that you can do with inside of Python. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this was useful and helpful for your learning journey inside of Python. Let me know if you guys have any questions and feel free to reach out to me at any time at Matthew, N-G-U-Y-E, 2023 at fau.edu.